it's great to be able to join you again uh, online. Um, I hope you've had a good summer. Uh, we're now beginning September. Schools are back uh, this week coming. You probably know that. That's probably not information to you. Um, but today, uh, we're going to do one of our Vision Sundays. So you're probably aware, if you've been uh, joining us for a little while, that uh, about three times a year, so the beginning normally of every school term, um, we do a, a slightly different Sunday that we call a Vision Sunday, which is just an opportunity, really, to focus again on what is God speaking to us as a restore family of churches? What is he saying in this season? Uh, you know, in Proverbs, there's a famous verse, Proverbs 29, verse 18, that says, uh, without vision, the people perish. And literally, the proper accurate translation of it is, without vision, uh, the people are unrestrained, which basically means unless we've got a vision, unless we've got focus, we'll wander all over the place. And the problem with wandering all over the place is you end up getting lost and not uh, actually making it in the direction that God has for us. So as a church, we take really seriously the fact that God is continually speaking. You know, over the summer, we've been uh, thinking about how the Spirit speaks. And uh, we're made to be in relationship with God, therefore to hear his voice. And, uh, and if we hear his voice, it's so that God can guide us and move us into the next season. So we take really seriously, uh, uh, taking a bit of time and space just to say, OK, God, what are you speaking to us in this season? And what does that mean for the action that we need to take as we move forward? Now, if you remember back to the very beginning of the year, um, we asked God for a word for us for 2023. And the verses that God gave to us were from Isaiah chapter 43. And there are verses 18 to 19. Just want to remind you of those because we're still 2023. And so I think God's still speaking something to us from this chapter. And so we need to uh, continue to have it in front of us and take hold of the stuff that God is speaking to us. So Isaiah 43 verse 18 says this. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. And if you know the context uh, that this is from in the book of Isaiah, the first half of the book of Isaiah, so from chapter 1 through to uh, chapter 40, really is quite bleak because Israel aren't doing well. They're not tuning into the voice of God, so they're not focused. They haven't got clear vision and direction. And so they're wandering all over the place. So they're suffering hardship after hardship after hardship. And often when hardship comes upon us, it's actually God trying to get our attention to say, listen to me, come back to me, tune in to me. And, uh, and uh, Israel, God's people, are not doing a good job at that. And they end up uh, going into exile, uh, losing the land that God had meant for them to have. The first 40 chapters are not particularly great news for Israel. Um, but then from uh, chapter 41 through to the end of Isaiah, uh, uh, which is chapter 66, uh, God starts to speak about hope. And he starts to speak about the way that he's working in this next season for Israel. Because although Israel haven't ended up where God wanted them to be, that doesn't stop God from working. And God was wanting to work to bring them back to a place of good relationship with him, but also to a place where he could bless them once more. And so this is a new season that God is getting their attention for, for a new thing that he's doing. Now, one of the reasons uh, I say that history is I think in many ways that is uh, similar for us in terms of over the last few years, we've had to um, find our way through a number of crises and a number of pressures which have, have rocked uh, the world, they've rocked us as a nation, and they've rocked many of us individually. And I think in the midst of that, we're trying to drill down to say, God, what are you doing? God, what are you saying out of this? God, um, what is it that you're wanting to do in us uh, through this whole process and through this whole season? So if we look at those verses in uh, context to, to that, it begins and God says, um, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. And uh, what I think God's saying out of that is, uh, I'm doing something new and you need to look for the new and realize there's some things you need to leave behind. When I talked at the start of the year, um, you might remember I talked a little bit about the griefs of the last few years, uh, the things that uh, we've struggled with, the things that we've lost, 
and uh, just taking a bit of time to process those things because obviously if we carry in griefs and disappointments and uh, not bringing them to Jesus and uh, not inviting him into the process of healing us and uh, restoring us from those, ultimately they'll weigh us down and they'll stop us from moving forward. Um, actually, the way, one of the ways you can translate uh, verse uh, 18 is forget the former things, do not camp in the past. And sometimes the mistake we make is we camp or we settle somewhere as if this is all it uh, is going to happen to me, this is my lot, and then we end up stuck because actually God wants to move us forward. Now, I've been really encouraged this year by uh, the number of ways that I've seen uh, God move, restore forward, and I've seen uh, people uh, move forward in terms of their relationship with God. And I think that's a really encouraging sign. But again, I just want to, um, I guess, remind you at the start of this uh, new season, if there's still bits of history that you haven't resolved, if there's still bits of pain from the last season that you know that you're struggling with, now is a really good time as we uh, enter this, uh, this uh, last term of this year, now is a really good time to eke out some time and space and just process some of those things. Because it will, if we're still holding on to the past, it will stop us from stepping into the new things that God's got for us. Then it goes on and it says, see, I'm doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? And uh, uh, what we need to be doing in this season is looking for the new thing that God is doing. And uh, again, if I can remind you, when I spoke at the start of the year, I spoke about the fact that I feel like God is trying to get our attention as the church because he's wanting to lead us forward in a different way from the past. I don't know if you... Um, pay attention to a lot of the Christian media or a lot of the events that are happening in the Christian world. Um, but over the last year or so, maybe the last year or 18 months, there's a number of Christian ministries and a number of Christian leaders um, who have fallen from grace. And uh, I've been quite stirred by that, partly because um, it always pains me um, when I see a Christian leader um, falling um, from the place that God wants them to. Um, because one, I feel sorry for the person, but two, I feel sorry for all the people around that uh, get hurt through the process of that. Um, so I find that personally um, quite a challenge. But one of the things I've been reflecting on is, is God, why is this happening? God, why are we seeing it? And uh, one of the things that I think I've noticed is that over the last maybe 20, 30 years as a church, um, we've been influenced by a kind of corporate mindset that churches have grown and they've kind of become big organizations. And, and uh, uh, quite a lot of the teaching actually on church growth is uh, centered around uh, kind of like using business-like models and stuff. And we've ended up uh, focused uh, on a kind of style of church which is very entertainment focused that often relies on somebody to give a, a brilliant sermon from the front from a highly charismatic leader, a bit like you get every week from me, uh, he says, joking. Um, but it, it ends up focused on a very slick performance that takes a lot of effort to do it and places a lot of attention on an individual. And when I look at that, that actually reminds me of a celebrity kind of entertainment culture. And uh, as I look back on uh, people that, uh, that I used to uh, make my kind of celebrity idols in years gone by, um, what I've recognised from most of them is that success, fame and fortune often lead to personal destruction, that people aren't actually able to handle that. And I think if we build a model of church that is highly centralised, that is performance focused, that is based on an individual, maybe it's not surprising that the amount of pressure that that puts on an individual person to perform in a role, maybe it's not surprising that many people crack under that. And actually, it seems to me that Jesus avoided continually trying to do that. And so I think in lots of ways, part of what we're seeing in the wider church um, uh, uh, context is we're seeing the last model of church, and we're seeing the underside of that become more evident. And I hear more and more people saying, do you know what, I'd like to be part of a smaller church, I'd like to be a place where I can be real, honest, where I can be known, um, I'd like to uh, have an everyday experience of sharing life, and I'd like to genuinely live a life that looks like Jesus, as opposed to go to a big event, feel good for a, mo for a moment, and then go off and do the rest of my life. And so I think people are looking for something that is more genuine, that is more authentic, that 
that is more real, that is more everyday focused, and that genuinely feels and looks like the values and the ethos of Jesus being lived out. And I believe that that is the new thing that God is wanting us to lean into. And as a church, as Restore, we made a deliberate choice when we came out of COVID, when we restarted, that we would restart in more locations, in more congregations, and we would restart smaller and try and go deeper in everyday life with people. And actually, one of the things that's really encouraged me this year has been starting to see some of the fruit of that. Um, Just to give you a little bit of an update from our different locations, but uh, Albany yesterday had the um, community day, which was fantastic in terms of Restore Albany has really come to life in terms of their heart and their ability to reach out and serve their local community. And if you've ever been to Albany, you know they're on a they're on a, a high street, uh, uh, and so they're in a prime location for that. What's been really exciting about Restore Albany over the, this last season is uh, they ha- had their first baptisms, the first two baptisms in 15 years because there's people for the first time coming and encountering Jesus. Uh, Having had a number of years of no kids work, now most weeks there's kids coming to Albany because there's new families that are starting to come through our community outreach. And people have got a sense of belonging and the church is starting to grow. Do you know, that's part of the new thing that God wants us to step into. Um, Some of the people watching this morning hopefully are restore Epping. If you know anything about Epping, what we've decided to do is have a go at planting a church in Epping that isn't based around a Sunday meeting. So if you're tuning in today uh, in Epping, you're probably tuning in at Alice Carter's house around the meal table having had breakfast together. And uh, what they're doing is primarily... Uh, meeting in small groups in homes, meeting for worship and uh, looking at the word, also meeting to do uh, relational things on a Sunday to invite other people into or going around uh, prayer walking. They've recently done a joint alpha course with Thaden Boys Baptist Church, seen a number of people from the local community come to it and now are starting to run uh, weekly evening uh, meetings that they're inviting some of those people who are still journeying towards Jesus into a community that is trying to get hold of Jesus in a new way. I'm really excited by that because, again, I think that is the authentic, everyday expression of Jesus that he's wanting to take us towards. In Loughton, uh, we made the decision to move from Davenant, uh, a big uh, uh, Christian uh, school, to a small uh, uh, junior school, Alderson Primary School. But what's been really exciting is the ways that we're beginning to partner with that school And it's a non-Christian school, but we're able to partner in terms of serving the local community and some of the kids most in need. And again, we're starting to see first-time people come to church and come to know Jesus. In Woodford, if you've been to our Woodford Restore location, that's where we film this. Um, If you come along on a Sunday morning, you know Tobias and Joyce are doing a great job. But in particular, a lot of our young people are stepping forward to help lead the ministry in Woodford. And so their band every week is is all uh, comprised of uh, teenagers who are turning up week in, week out and really leading the congregation in worshipping Jesus. Why? Because in a smaller context, everyone's needed and everybody's contribution makes a difference. And because Tobias and Joyce have got a heart for young people, they're gathering young people and they're seeing God move. And Winchmore, our other location, um, we've got a group of people over the last couple of months that have just been praying and saying, okay, God, our real strength here is our relationships together. God, what does that mean for the next season? How do we take the strength of that and then work out how we can impact our local community and better connect with local families? And we're on a journey of tuning into the voice of God again to say, God, what are you speaking in this season? But how do we have a strength of relationship, a shared life, and out of that, a real opportunity to live missionally in terms of serving our local community? And for me, I'm really excited because in each of our locations we're starting to see new things happen we're starting to see new opportunities uh, come up we're starting to see new people come to meet Jesus and it is only just the beginnings and uh, and you maybe have to look uh, under the surface to see it happening but I believe we're starting to see the new thing that God is wanting to do and that's the new direction that I believe the Lord is wanting us to to pursue and push into in this next context And the last bit of this verse I just want to say, and then I'll talk about some of the things coming up in the autumn. 
It says, I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So I think the thing that has struck me more than anything so far in 2023 is the number of people who've been hit by really challenging situations and circumstances. Um, I, I don't know that I've um, experienced so many individuals hit with really tough, big situations and had to journey through them. And uh, I've been asking God a little bit about that um, because that's not an easy thing to do. But I, I feel like part of what God has been doing through it, and I don't think God's created all of those um, instances. Um, I think the enemy uh, uh, throws uh, a lot of that stuff at us. I think what God has been doing through it, though, is he's been using it to deepen uh, relationship and heart connect. Because, you see, when everything's going okay, we can get away with not needing anyone else. But actually, when we're hit with an illness ourselves that's totally uh, debilitating, or we've hit with a crisis in the family, or we suffer an incredible trauma that comes out of nowhere, that rocks us to the very core of who we are. It's in those moments that we really need other people. And uh, part of what I've experienced in my own life, but also in the community that I'm a part of, is that in the midst of some of those real traumas and uh, real challenges, there's been such an expression of love and support and uh, oneness that actually relationship has gone really, started to go really, really deep. And I think that's part of the fruit that God can bring out of hardship. And so I just want to encourage you, if you are struggling this morning, or if you're facing hardship, push into relationship. Let us know. You know email us. Email me, ian.king at restorecc.org.uk or info at restorecc.org.uk. We want to come alongside you. We want to support you. But I believe that God is wanting to take us deeper. You know, in Africa, they say it takes a whole village to raise a child. And I think the Lord is wanting to take us back into our understanding that we really, really are stronger together and that it will take a community a group of people committed to journeying together, to being like family together, to walk us through some of these situations. And, and so I just want to really encourage you, don't get isolated in this season and lean into relationship, because I think that is part of the direction that God is wanting to take us into. So what have we got planned for the autumn se season? Well, just five things I want to mention, really. Um, number one, um, from Sunday the 18th, or Monday the 18th of uh, September through to Sunday the 24th of September, we've got a week of prayer and fasting. Now again, every January, every September, over the last few years, uh, we found it really helpful to take a week, or sometimes several weeks, that we use spe specifically to push into Jesus and to lay down some things that maybe in our everyday life kind of end up being distractions or deflections from pushing into Jesus. And so in a couple of weeks' time, starting on uh, Monday the 18th of September, we're going to have a week of prayer and fasting. And I'd encourage you, uh, get the week in your diary. Think about, God, what do you want me to fast from? I, I think fasting from food is a really powerful thing. I also think fasting from other things that we um, maybe fill our lives with, uh, maybe Netflix or maybe social media or some of those things can be really powerful just to cut them out and say, God, I'm going to give this week specifically to Jesus and specifically to tuning in to your voice. And, uh, and uh, this time from the Monday to Friday, we're going to have six o'clock in the morning prayer meetings. They're going to be online on Zoom. So we'll send around codes for it. But they're easy ways to be able to start your day together in prayer with Jesus. And on the Tuesday evening, we're going to have a worship gathering here in Woodford. On the Thursday evening, we're going to have a worship gathering um, in Albany, in Enfield. Um, and then we're going to have a weekend that I'll come to in a second. But there are opportunities where we can come together, where we can worship Jesus and again hear his voice together. And I'd really, really encourage you, you know, the closer we are to Jesus, then the better placed we're going to be for every aspect of life. Let's use this week from the 18th to 24th of September, really, really to pursue and to push into the presence of Jesus together. So looking, at, look out for your um, emails, um, look at your boxes and we'll give you more information on that. 
Second thing to mention is Saturday the 23rd of September, we're going to have a Restore Family Day Together. One of the things we want to do over this next season is increase some of the uh, family things that we're doing for the whole of Restore. So an opportunity for us all to come together to worship and to celebrate. And on Saturday the 23rd of September, again, full details will come. But we've got a, a long-term friend of mine and of Restore, a guy called Stuart Lees, who uh, headed up a lot of the Living Free ministry that we've run for many, many years. Stuart Lees is coming to input us, and uh, he's a man of the Spirit. He's a great uh, Bible teacher. So he's coming to teach us, but he's also bringing along with him a, a wonderful worship leader called Steve Abley, who's a prophetic worship leader. And he's going to come and lead us in worship. And the way it's going to happen is, is we're going to gather this Saturday lunchtime at Alderton School, um, and uh, we're going to gather, we're going to worship. Um, Stuart will do some input during the course of the afternoon. We'll have kids' activities going on at the same time, um, and then we'll um, have a little bit of space for dinner. It'll be bring your own food or go out locally and, uh, and get some food, and then in the evening, we'll have mainly a prophetic worship evening. And what we want to do going forward is every six months, we want to have a restore-wide gathering where we can uh, get somebody in probably a lot of the time, get some fresh input, some fresh vision, some fresh excitement together for the next season. And we're going to begin that in September. We're already planning our first one for next year, for 2024. We've got someone booked for that already as well. But every six months, we're going to do that to create a sense of family identity as Restore and also to help us as we move forward. Thirdly, um, we've got uh, a, an October teaching series coming up. We've got two um, series that we're doing in the autumn before we get to Christmas. Can you believe Christmas is coming soon? Um, the first one we're kicking off next week. It's a series. It's all about how we disciple and serve one another. And uh, Tobias has put together the first series. We're going to look at John's Gospel and we're going to look at G how Jesus discipled others in John's Gospel. And from that, what we want to be doing, remember we want to be authentic, everyday people living out uh, our life with Jesus. So we want, to, uh, we want to be asking the question, how can I better grow in Jesus? What are the things I need to do to grow my relationship with Jesus? But also, how, how better can I invest in the lives of those people around? So together, we're all growing. You know, the word disciple means trainer or learner. And so how can I learn more of Jesus in this season? And how can I intentionally help others to grow in Jesus over this season? So we're going to be looking at that starting next week. Tobias is going to do the whole series of online talks for that. Tobias is, is great on all of this stuff. He's got loads of experience in it. And then when that series comes to an end, we're going to start another series that's called Relevant. And we're going to look at some of the key issues of uh, culture and society uh, in the 21st century and see what Jesus has to speak into them. So we're going to look at some of the issues like the environment. We're going to look at uh, uh, inequality and poverty. We're going to look at power dynamics and kind of like the Me Too movement. We're going to look at some of the conversations currently going on in terms of sexuality. And we're going to talk about uh, what, what Jesus might have to speak into those things. You know, I believe the words of Jesus can be incredibly powerful and relevant and a light to us in these times. But we want to uh, drill down on what did Jesus teach about these kind of things and what should be the outworking for our response to them. So we're going to look at discipling and training others and serving others and then we're going to look at, at relevance, the relevancy of Jesus and the church in the 21st century to what's going on in life ahead of us. And then by Christmas we'll look at the birth of Jesus. Surprise, surprise. Um, fourth thing, in October, we have our annual church general meeting. Uh, it's an opportunity to come together to celebrate all that God's done in the last year. Um, there's also some business things we need to do. And uh, this year, the AGM is going to be on Wednesday evening, the 18th of October. It's going to be a meeting here. They'll also, it'll also be online, so you can tune into that. This year, though, um, we're proposing an update to our church constitution. Now, every charity has to have a constitution. It's a legal document that gives all the technicalities about how a charity has to function to comply with charity law and also to make it fit for purpose. 
And over the last few years, as we've grown as Restore to a, a church now in multiple locations, we need to update our constitution to make it fit for purpose. And we've had a subgroup of the trustees that have been working on that for the uh, last couple of years, actually, getting some external advice on it. We're about to launch a proposed updated constitution. So in the next week or so, we'll be issuing some uh, short videos that give an overview of why we're doing it, what it contains, but also a draft form of the new constitution. Now, we want to encourage you to read it, to look at it, give us any feedback that you want to, but our aim is for the AGM on the 18th of October to be able to vote that into being, and we believe that will give us a greater strength to underpin us organisationally and structurally for this next season. So um, that's uh, something to keep your eye out for and uh, hopefully I think something that will um, help to strengthen us going forward. Last thing to mention is we have a brand new Restore website. Um, one of our great members of staff is, is Jo Mackey, who now is our Director of Operations, and she's been working over this last season to update the Restore website to make it, again, as fit for purpose, as accessible as, as possible. If you click on it now, www.restorecc.org.uk, it should be live. Um, and again, it's just one of the ways that we're wanting to uh, develop the Ministry of Restore going forward. So you see um, little, uh, you'll be able to see the team and team photos. You'll be able to find out um, a little more about all of our locations. A again, an update in terms of the clarity of our vision and our focus and all of that stuff coming forward. And the last thing that I want to mention is also we've just uh, appointed a new member of the Restore team, a new member of the staff team. Um, which I'm very excited about um, because uh, around Easter time we advertise for an associate lead for the Loughton congregation. As many of you may know, um, our Loughton congregation is, is my local congregation, it's where I am. Um, but increasingly, as I lead the whole of Restore, um, I need to delegate some of the responsibility for the nuts and bolts in terms of the Loughton congregation. And so we advertise for an associate lead for the Loughton congregation. Really, really pleased to be able to announce that Malcolm Pierce, who many of you may know has been a long-term member of, uh, of Restore, Malcolm and Emily, uh, Malcolm applied for the role and we've appointed him to it, which is really exciting. So this morning, we're going to be praying Malcolm into that role in Restore out. And as I say, I'm really excited about that because Malcolm's uh, someone really passionate about Jesus and passionate about his local community. And also it will increasingly free me to do some of the stuff that I haven't been able to get to um, because I've been covering the Latin stuff. So as I say, lots of different things going on within the life of Restore over this autumn season. Just want to encourage you really to invest in well. As I said earlier, you know, I believe the new thing that God is doing is he's, he's bringing us to a place that we uh, uh, have a greater sense of community and shared life. I want everyone that's a part of Restore to know that they're known and they have a place where they belong. And so I want to encourage you, and I know even watching this online can be slightly disconnected, let's uh, get as best connected as we possibly can. If you do watch this regularly and we're not aware of you, do, 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 please um, email us, contact us in, because we'd love to create a deeper sense of community for you. For me, um, I think that God is doing something significantly new in the UK as I yeah, get the pleasure of uh, meeting with uh, a number of other leaders. Um, I can see God speaking the same sort of things uh, up and down the country in many different areas to many other churches. I believe there is a new thing that the Lord is doing and we want to push into it together as Restore. So there's probably lots of information in that, but I just want to take a moment as we uh, come to an end just to be able to pray. And I just want to take you back to that, uh, those verses that I read at the very beginning. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Let's pray. Lord, I really believe, Lord, this is a season that you're wanting to move us forward. And Lord, we know that uh, following you is a journey. And Lord, I just want to pray for us all this morning. And Lord, if there's things that we haven't processed from this last season, if there's things that we haven't maybe faced up to or made the time and space just to open up before you, 
Lord, I pray that you will speak to us about those things. And Lord, I pray in this season, Lord, and maybe in this time of prayer and fasting coming up, we will make space and room to process those things. Lord, I don't want to be camping in any of my history when you've got a destiny to walk me into. So Lord, will you help me, Lord, to process the stuff I need to so I'm able to let go of it and step into the new that you're doing? And Lord, it really does feel like you're wanting to do a new thing, Lord, and the new thing I think you're wanting to do, Lord, is about a deepening of connection with you, but with one another and an authenticity and an honesty, a reality about the way that we face life and we face life together. And Lord, I pray that you will help us, Lord, to find a way to step closer in relationship to one another. Lord, maybe, maybe Lord, some of the folk watching are some of the folk that have experienced some of the pressure of this year or some of the trauma of this year. Lord, I pray that out of every pressure, over every squeezing, over every heartbreak, Lord, that we might step closer to one another and closer to you, and that you might forge a depth in our togetherness and our unity and our relationships. And Lord, I pray over this next season, we really might start to flourish and grow. Lord, even though the world around us may feel like a wilderness, Lord, it may feel like as a, as a nation, economically, socially, we're in a, in a wilderness, in a wasteland. Lord, thank you that you've promised that we can be a stream in that wasteland. And Lord, I pray that we will find a richness and a depth and a strength in you that will mean we flourish in this season. In Jesus' name.